Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of our dear Lord Jesus, I welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. And by the power of his name, I pronounce a multiplication of grace and peace in all the facets of your life as we receive greater light in the truth of his word in these sessions. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. So, if you joined us yesterday, we started off with the subject of um, living for the better and not for the worse. We understood that every activity of life that you engage in, whether from the level of thought or speech or action, either makes your life better or makes your life worse. Nothing you are engaged in in life even something as silent as sleeping is neutral. Nothing is neutral. Whatever you are in, whether you are eating, sleeping, walking, whatever you are involved in, it's either making your life better or worse. And God is telling us this week that, look, live for the better. Become a child of God that has developed the mentality of engaging in the activities of life for the betterment of your life. This is the only way that your life can be as the part of a just that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. And we started looking at that. And so that's what we are going to continue today. Um, we narrowed it down a little bit to the celebration of Easter because then we are in the week of Easter. And we made it clear already in other teachings that whether you choose to celebrate Easter or not is not the issue. God is not mandating the celebration of Easter. So if you don't want to celebrate it, leave the one that wants to celebrate it to do it. If you want to celebrate it, leave the one that doesn't want to celebrate it not to celebrate it. Just like birthdays, anniversaries, and all that. Okay? These things are not compulsory. The Bible makes it clear. Let no man judge you concerning these things. But if you choose to do it, then make sure you do it in a way that adds value to your life in the spirit, not in a way that stagnates or reduces your stage in spirit. Okay, but just before we go ahead, just to announce to you again, that in the month of May, we shall be having a week where we'll have a discussion of questions and answers. You know, as a Gula Devotion family, we are all over the world, and uh, we know that the Gula Devotion is a center that teaches uh, mature teachings for the maturity of the church. And so some dimensions of the truth that we bring to you, you may not have heard. And so when you hear them, they kind of stare some questions. If they do, or if they did, we expect that you send us your questions and then by the Spirit we'll take a look at some of them as much as time will permit us and then we'll discuss them. So be part of making the discussions interesting and uh, uh, varying by bringing your questions and we'll look at as many as the Spirit of God will, will allow us to address and then we can look at it. There should be questions that are based on things that we have taught you before because 
we will not be derailed into something that you want to pull us into. We will stick to what the Lord is asking us to teach. Okay? All right. So, of course, we may not have thought on something, but you can send it to us. If the Lord asks us to address it, we will. Okay? All right. Then don't forget also that we are in a season of the dramatic um, greatness of the church. It began this year. The strategy is mounting up with wings as eagles. So don't relax. Have in mind that I'm going to shift my gear. I'm going to move from an ordinary Christian to a word-based Christian, a Christian who knows God for myself. It is time to be that Christian who talks about God with certainty, not talking about God based on what someone else has said. Yes, what someone else has said should lead you to discover God for yourself so that you can have your own testimony. The Bible says that a Samaritan woman met Jesus. When he went to town, he said, come and see this man who told me everything about myself. When they came, they came because the woman told them. But when they sat at Jesus' feet and they heard him, they said, look, we now believe not because he told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Are you following this? So we teach you to bring you to the feet of Jesus so that you can experience him for yourself. And then you can say, I know Jesus. It is time to be that Christian. Praise God. Good. So talking about living for the better, not for the worse. Today we're going to focus on the topic, focus on the end, not the means. And we are still dealing with the subject of Easter. In your celebration of Easter, the Lord wants you to focus on what Easter brought to the world. Not to stay at what happened at Easter and then be um, weeping over that. Your celebration of Easter must be something that focuses on what did the activities of Easter achieve for me? What did that make out of me? Because the activities of Jesus' suffering, crucifixion, death, and all that, they were a means to an end. They were not the end in themselves. So focus on the end, not the means, if you want to celebrate Easter. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 is our main scripture for today. Hebrews 2, 10 says that, For it became him, Marco de Satakaba, it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things? In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Wow, this is interesting. Why was Jesus, the captain of the salvation of mankind, perfected through sufferings? He said, so that he will bring many sons unto glory. So what God wants you is not to build a house around the suffering and every year be ruminating and brooding on how the sufferings were terrible and pitying yourself and feeling terrible for yourself, but to now focus on enjoying and being what the sufferings were meant for. The topic is focus on the end and not just the means. First thing to take home today, Christ died only once and for all. Christ did what? He died only once and for all. He will not die again. It doesn't matter how you celebrate and weep and mourn and even carry something to go and bury again. Jesus will not come and die. If you remain in a funeral life for life, Jesus is not in a funeral. Jesus is alive today. He's no more dead. So daughter or son of God, it's important to understand that today, Christ is no more suffering. He suffered only once and for all mankind. He's no more suffering. Christ died only once. He's no more dead. Christ went to hell once. He will no more go to hell. You must let this settle in your mind. May I should read a scripture to you? Let's go to Romans chapter 6. You can just read the whole of Romans 6. It's so, it's so interesting. But I'll take just some two verses because of time. Okay, let's take from verse 9. It says, Knowing that 
Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Did you hear that? Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Do you hear that? For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Let this sink into your spirit that Jesus died once. Yeah, I know. Okay, so why are you still crying? Why are you still burying a Jesus that is alive? Even Mary, when she was looking for Jesus, and the angel appeared, he asked her, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Now I will stop weeping and talking about funeral. Look at Jesus. He is alive. Focus on the end and not just the means. So the first thing to take home as you celebrate Easter this year and the rest of the years to Jesus comes, let your celebration of Easter be focused on the end. What did Easter achieve after all? And we are not just saying this because we want to be positive. I will show you the biblical reasons. When you don't know the meaning of your actions, that you are doing something that does not mean that what you are doing is helping you. There are a lot of things people are doing that they would have been better off not doing them. Because when they did them, they felt worse and they became worse than if they hadn't done them. And that's why I say celebrate for the better, not for the worse. If it will be for the worse, then you are better off not celebrating. And God will not hold anything against you. If you are born again, it doesn't take the celebration of Easter to be a serious Christian. Hallelujah. All right. So that's the first take home uh, point. Christ died once and for all. So as we speak now, Christ is no more suffering. So do not make it look like every year Christ suffers. Let not your remembrance make it as though he's now suffering. No. He's living in glory now. All right. Number two. What then is the meaning of glorying in the cross? So the meaning of glorying in the cross. Another point must take home. And I'm sharing this with us because I know the emphasis that the Apostle Paul placed on the cross and the glorifying of the sufferings of Christ. And it was because, listen, nobody was given the message of grace to preach, was Apostle Paul, in his time. And people wanted to make the sufferings of Christ of none effect as if it wasn't for the sin of mankind. And so Paul said, look, with what I'm asked to tell the world, I will, I will glory in the cross. I will never allow the cross of Christ to be made something that is like it means nothing. But if you don't understand that, it was because of the emphasis that was needed to establish the message of grace in the midst of the strength of the message of the law. You will still carry the same emphasis to today and be celebrating Easter in a way that is not helping you to grow. And so when you hear that in the celebration of Easter, you should focus on the resurrection and the things that followed instead of the death, you might be thinking, oh, that means that we are trying to make the cross of Christ of non-effect. And of course, that would be an antichrist. To be like, hey, now, what you're teaching is wrong because Paul said that people who are not of God are those who make the cross of uh, Christ of non-effect. We are not making the cross of Christ of non-effect. I want to show you. So if we are supposed to focus on the resurrection, where is the issue of glory in the cross? Let's go to Galatians 2.20 where the apostle Paul himself stated, something about the cross. So where does a remembrance of the cross come in in the life of a Christian? Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, it, it sums up everything about what Apostle Paul said concerning the, the glory of the cross. Verse 20 says that, I have been crucified with Christ. <laughs> it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In fact, if you read the King James, said that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. I like that King James rendering. 
I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The moment he says, nevertheless, he, he shifts the emphasis to where the emphasis should be. He says, yes, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So I am no more dead. I am now alive. So the reason for the remembrance of the crucifixion is to know that it, by that crucifixion, there is a new you alive today. Then he says, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So if a child of God should remember and glory in the cross, it is to glory in the Father. By the cross, the human life died. And by that process, a new me is alive today. That is the positive way of glorying in the cross. However, if someone decides to glory in the cross by designing a new cross, a postmodern dimension of Jesus' image, and bleeding and all the artwork, and standing before that Jesus and crying and feeling pity for Jesus and all that, that is almost idolatry. At the end of the day, you will feel more unworthy than you are. And you have created an unworthy situation for your own self. When Christ expects you to be celebrating his resurrection and ascension and he's being seated at the right hand of the majesty on high with you. Are you following this? He says, I am crucified with Christ. Who? The human Paul was crucified. He says, nevertheless, I live. So he shifts the emphasis quickly to living. Christ is alive. That is how you must celebrate. So if you want to glory in the cross, oh dear Lord Jesus, I'm glad that you died for the, for the world. And that means you died for the human that was in me. I'm glad that through that crucifixion today, I am alive as a son of God. Glory to God, you are gone. Now the focus comes on the resurrection and the living today. This is so, so powerful. It will change your life to the extent that every Easter celebration will take you higher in your Christianity. But if you don't know these things, Every Easter always, all the time, makes you feel the sinful human, the unworthy human, and it keeps you somewhere down that you have, you have built a house at the foot of the cross when you should be seated together with him at the right hand of the majesty on high. Are you following this? All right. So talking about uh, focusing on the end and not the means is not like, Making the preaching of the cross of non effect or the glory in the cross of non effect. No. We put there that the acknowledgement of the cross, that the sufferings and death of Jesus, is so that one can track things onto his current status and function after resurrection. Because there will be no resurrection if there was no death. Are you catching this? So if you want to claim that Jesus was raised from the dead, then you must know he died. So the reason for the remembrance of the death of Jesus is to give credit to the resurrection. Do you know that the people that claim that Jesus never died and that a disciple was crucified in, in his place? So if he didn't die, you can't talk about resurrection. So to give credit to the resurrection, you must acknowledge the death. To give credit to the cancellation of the deaths of man, you must acknowledge the sufferings. Are you catching this? So there is a reason for the acknowledgement of the sufferings and the burial, the death, and all that. But now, the purpose for that acknowledgement is not to become identified with it in the humanistic celebration and feeling remorseful and, and all that. The aim is to give credit to where you are today so you can celebrate with conviction. Are you following this? So we said that if one remembers the death and the sufferings of Jesus for the purposes of realizing that they paved the way for the resurrection and the being seated together at the right hand of the majesty on high, then that is the meaning of preaching and glorying in the cross. That's the actual meaning. To, to preach the cross and to glory in the cross is to explain the reason for the resurrection. Is to explain the reason for the glorification. Are you catching this? It is not to be celebrating and, 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 and weeping as though Christ was still suffering today. So you can glory in the cross. You can preach the cross. But it must be done in the light of the truth of what is happening today. Are you catching it? I glory in the cross. I preach the cross. But I do that in the light of the risen Lord today. Hallelujah.
Praise God. If you care to know, you even realize that the big deal is the resurrection. In fact, let me just give you that point before we close for today. So, first take home point was that Christ suffered only once. Number two take home point is the meaning of glory in the cross. And I told you what that means just now. The third thing is the resurrection is the big deal. And I'll show you something. There's no scripture anywhere that says that just accepting that Jesus died will get you born again. Rather, the scriptures are filled with proof that it is the belief in the resurrection of Jesus and the confession of the Lordship of Christ that imparts eternal life. The book of Romans chapter 4, if you read the 25th verse, it talks about the fact that Christ was delivered on account of the offenses of the world and he was raised from the dead on account of their justification. So the justification did not come from the death. The death was on account of the offenses. So if Christ died and he remained in the grave and he was never raised from the dead, nobody would receive eternal life. The sins of the world would have been forgiven, but man would have still remained man without eternal life. It is the resurrection that imparts man with eternal life to become sons and daughters of God. So Romans 10, 9 and 10 clearly states, it says that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believing with thine heart that God raised him from the dead, that's what the big deal is. That's what the big deal is. In fact, the early church had a commission to testify of the resurrection of Jesus. That was their main ministry. To be witnesses that Jesus died and rose again from the dead. The miracles that they did were to prove that Jesus was alive. So the resurrection is the big deal. And so whatever you do today in your Christian work, focus on the resurrection and the ascension to the right hand of the majesty. And that will inspire you. That will stir you up to discover who you are and the benefits of Jesus' sufferings and death and all that. But if you choose to stay on how he suffered, how you are unworthy and all that, it will only make you feel more unworthy and you become farther away from the experience of what his death did. Remember our main scripture for today that the cross was just a means to an end. It wasn't the end in itself. The end of the cross was to bring sons into glory. Learn to celebrate Easter by ruminating on the facts of the resurrection the ascension, and how they relate with you because the realities of your life in Christ today are what the end is about. The, the death was a means to that and that is the, what you are in today. So back to our main scripture, Hebrews 2.10. In bringing many signs unto glory, he made the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So the end is to bring you to glory. Focus on that glory as you celebrate. Ruminate on that glory. Study the word around that glory. If you focus on discovering how glorious you have become today, you will live above sin. If you focus on how glorious you have become today, you will live above poverty, above sickness, above the devil. But if you focus on how unworthy you are, you'll be befitted by sin, by demons, curses, and all these kind of things. And your Christianity will remain stagnated. You have been celebrating Easter every year for the worse and not for the better. But God has brought a change today. So focus on the end and not the means as you celebrate Easter this year. This is how much I'm prepared for today. Why? If you have been watching us or you have been listening, depending on the platform, this is the reality of the season. Yes. Jesus died. Why did he die? That he will bring you into glory. How do you come into glory? You must be born again. You must receive his life of glory. By believing that not only did he die, but he rose again from the dead. And today because of where he is, he is Lord of all life. And that is what will activate and bring the process of the new birth into your spirit. If you want to step into the glory that Jesus brought, by reason of the season we are celebrating now, then make this confession after me with all your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit by declaring Jesus is Lord. I am born again. 
Glory to God. If you are born again, do write us and let us know. Three things to do. Ensure you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You can call the numbers displayed on your screen and we can help you. Number two, continue to follow the glory devotion daily to receive truth that will help you to grow. Number three, get planted in a, a fellowship of believers who believe in the Bible, they teach the truth of the Bible, and they practice it. And be in that fellowship and remain strong in Christ till he comes. Surely we are going to meet in our next episode, but today life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrade, Kaswa Lagon, Tachiman Tema New Town, Ashama New Town. Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, the Multinationals Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.